Thank you for inviting me to this international conference on global health and medical tourism. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person. My talk is going to be focused on medical tourism, where I believe India is destined to become one of the top three destinations in the world. I will first give facts and figures about the medical tourism industry globally, worldwide, suggest why India has several competitive and competitive advantages, and ultimately conclude about what India can do proactively so that it does become one of the top two or three global destinations for medical tourism. I see the rise of medical tourism in India similar to the rise of IT services, which in less than 25 years has become a $150 billion industry. Most of it obviously doing IT services for corporations and governments outside of India. So let's talk about the title. The title I've given is why India is destined to become a global destination for medical tourism. As I mentioned, India is destined to become one of the top three global destinations for medical tourism in less than a decade. The rise of India as a top global destination for medical tourism will be very similar to IT services, but also maybe similar to the cut diamond industry where India just dominates the world. There is no second, distant second actually in a diamond industry as India is. So let's first share some facts and figures. What is medical tourism? The standard definition is that patients who travel to another country to seek health care are referred to as medical tourists, and that is medical tourism. Medical tourism has been around for thousands of years. Archaeological evidence from the third millennium BC suggests that people in ancient Mesopotamia traveled to the temple of a healing god or goddess, we don't know, at Tel Brak in Syria to heal eye disorders. And we know from the older literature that there are people who came to India, there are people who came to China for medical tourism or taking care of their medical illnesses or conditions. Medical tourism industry is estimated to be or was estimated to be $439 billion in 2017. This number may look high but includes all other inclusive services like a companion or a family traveling, the travel cost, hospitality cost, not just hospital stay, or the procedures. Worldwide, there were 11 million medical tourists in 2017, and medical tourism is expected to grow at 25% annually. Therefore, medical tourism is very likely to surpass $1 trillion industry by 2025, no later than 2030, but I think 2025 it'll happen mostly because the advanced countries are aging and aging much more rapidly than we imagined. And the domestic cost of medical care is much greater, most of that paid by the governments who don't have the budgets and therefore they're outsourcing as much as they can, very similar to, as I mentioned, IT services. The most frequent conditions treated in medical tourists are dentistry, cosmetic surgery, dermatology, cardiovascular or heart conditions, liver and kidney transplants, spine surgery, but more interestingly, in vitro fertility and weight loss. If you just analyze the record, basically medical tourism industry is going away from primarily illness, mostly elective surgeries, to more and more toward wellness, and mostly non-surgical procedures. So it's becoming more a recreation industry rather than a true medical condition. And I think that's where the growth will come much faster than we are forecasting in all these numbers. What are the main influences that drive medical tourism? I was surprised when I found out the one main reason is 
there are certain treatments and medications not approved in some of the countries. Like United States, there are many, many uh, treatments for, let's say, cancer, which are not approved because they're not clinically proven. FDA has not given approval. And this is true of many countries. There are certain medications, such as the treatment from marijuana, for example, medical marijuana, as we call it, which was not legal till very recently, that generated a huge traffic across the border into Mexico or into Costa Rica, nearby countries. Some people have gone to Canada because the drug prices for very expensive drugs are a lot cheaper in Canada than they are in America, for example. The top five destinations in overall medical tourism index, this index is from the low to the high, consisting of three dimensions. Destination environment, the infrastructure, the physical aspects of the country, the nation. Medical tourism industry itself, how mature or how big it is, and the quality of facilities and services. And those five destinations are Canada number one on that index, United Kingdom number two, Israel number three, Singapore number four, and India number five. However, India ranks number one with respect to medical tourism industry, scale, size, and number of physicians, facilities, and number three in quality of facilities and services. However, it ranks low on destination environment. And I think this is where there is a hesitation. There is a demand out there, but the demand does not go to India because people worry about environmental issues, for example, pollution. Uh, water pollution, air pollution, infrastructure, roads, etc., etc. This is a very key bottleneck that we'll talk about later on. While North America is the largest market for medical tourism so far, it is shifting toward Asia, including India. So what are in India's comparative advantages and comparative advantages? The first and a key one is that we have more accredited medical facilities with latest technology. It is as good as any place in the world, but only in selected hospitals, most of them non-government hospitals or private sector. It has a large number of highly qualified physicians and surgeons, as well as support staff such as nurses and everybody else. It is a great value for money. In fact, it is so affordable that it is usually 15 to 20 percent only of the cost of a similar procedure, let's say a stent procedure for the heart condition, or whatever it is, than it is in the US, for example. It may be true even for the United Kingdom with National Health Services, NHS, it is again finding that doing things in the UK is more expensive than having people go out to other countries, especially India, on behalf of the government which pays for it. More importantly, there are no waiting lists. There's no wait list. If I have to do it something in an urgency or emergency matter, I can still do it. And remember, one of the largest practices is dentistry, not the typical things that we think about as medical tourism. Other one is cosmetic surgery. There are very interesting areas that are growing. It has a very key English speaking culture. Anywhere in the country, People can get by with English. They really don't need to learn local language, as may be true in Thailand, for example, or in Mexico, for example. Also, India has holistic tradition. In other words, blending the ancient treatments, such as Ayurveda or oil massages, blending that with the most modern allopathic treatments. In one location, I don't think there is any other country, possibly exception maybe China as it begins to rise in medical tourism also. But other than that, India is very unique. It offers all traditions of taking care, health care in some fashion, which I think one can create a fusion, one can create opportunities to have alternative treatments and hence the word holistic treatments. I think it's very important comparative advantage that one can leverage. More importantly or equally importantly, Indian diaspora globally is very large, especially in the medical field. 
all over the world, Indian physicians who have settled there, training in India, for example, going to the United Kingdom or going to Africa and definitely in the United States, they're a very large influential body. And of course, the physicians and the specialist surgeons, etc., are often the opinion makers, gatekeepers, uh, rather than the patient. So given that, one has to leverage the Indian global diaspora as much as possible because they are in very key positions either at medical institutions, hospitals, private practice, or universities. Last and a very key point is that India has a very large domestic market. That means a typical Indian physician or a surgeon has done more surgeries, whether it's a knee replacement surgery or a stent procedure in the heart or kidney transplant, whatever you think about, the numbers are large. And after all, medical care or is basically a clinical practice. The more experience you have in doing more treatments and surgeries, the more accumulative knowledge about different ways one can solve a patient's problem. So how can India leverage its potential opportunity? My view is that India needs to market itself properly. And the first main point is that there has to be an increase in awareness in advanced countries, especially, and promoting India's medical tourism, not just tourism, which is more on the culture, the heritage attractions, UNESCO places. That's not what I'm talking about. It is all about medical tourism, where the heritage attractions become secondary and medical treatment is becomes the primary focus of increasing the awareness com communication campaigns. We need to really develop medical specialty clusters in select locations. The old cluster theory that was pioneered by Italians way back when, and as it is used by special economic zones or special activities, whatever they call them today, I think similarly there have to be certain cities and certain locations where it is clustered together so that people associate that destination or city with a specialty as opposed to all-purpose general hospitals. Third, and a very important one, is to develop branded specialty treatment offerings. In other words, as you know, the biggest growth in America, which I know very well, is all about specialty hospitals. Hospital only for knee surgery, hospital only for spine even, hospital primarily for cancer treatment, hospital for heart purposes. Specialty yeah, hospitals are rising more and more at the expense of all-purpose hospitals where you do everything from emergency services to surgery to chronic diseases. I believe India must aspire and have all of its professional staff go for global accreditation or global certification of its medical experts and staff. Remember, India's software industry became world noticed it because first major software center certified was level five certification by Carnegie Mellon. That's like the gold standard. And that's what we need to do to make sure that everybody who touches the patient and their relatives and the friends who come with them, they're all certified uh, workers. Some of them will be technical, some will be just support, some obviously will be professional uh, where certification is done, but I'm talking about everybody who touches, including those who bring uh, hospitality services, has to be certified. And certified by global agencies, not by local agencies. Compete for global awards. This is very important. It has happened in the airline industry, for example, which is highly related. IT services the same way. I think we need to aspire that how can we apply for and win global awards? Because the benchmarking changes, it's not one Indian hospital benchmarking with other Indian hospital, but can we benchmark with Mayo Clinic, for example, or Cleveland uh, Clinic, for example, or whatever they are, world-class high institutions with whom you compete for awards. We can learn quite a lot from other emerging markets. This is not strictly advanced countries' industry. Thailand is wonderful in medical tourism. 
so is Mexico, so is Costa Rica. Now these are emerging economies just like India. And as I mentioned, eventually China will rise in this industry. It's inevitable, it's a matter of time pretty much. So learning from emerging markets may be equally important than learning only from advanced countries. I believe one of the very important strategic investment is in frontline digital technology. After all, the nation is one of the largest mobile users. We have mobile payments. We do everything using mobile telephone as opposed to a laptop. Can we do that in the medical tourism industry so that ultimately the end user or the patient, the provider, for example, as well as the payer are all connected through that mobile platform on a global basis? It can be done. If there, if there can be a flip, flip cart in India, if there's an Alibaba in China, it is very possible to do for us in the medical tourism industry or medical field in general. And it is very affordable today with cloud computing and smartphones so inexpensive. You also have the Aadhaar platform, but that is very unique platform. What I'm trying to say is that we have all the capabilities. It's a question of making a mission driven view to say, how can I get it done for medical tourism? And it may require public-private partnership, but I think private hospital healthcare professional entities need to get together for a common cause, whether it is through NASCAM, which is the IT services industry uh, association, or whether it is through uh, hospital groups industry association. But I think it is an industry-wide common phenomenon that one needs to create. I believe we focus too much in medical tourism on the patient and the family. We have to equally focus on the providers, which are all the medical doctors, hospitals in foreign countries, as well as the payer. And payer often is private insurance in America, for example, or Medicare, which is a government benefit program, or NSH in, uh, uh, let's say, England, similar programs in Canada, Government is one of the largest payers. So how do we market to payer? How do we market to the provider as we market to the patient? I think focus on payer and provider is equally important. I believe one has to bundle in medical tourism all of the heritage attractions. In fact, cities that have heritage attractions may become good targets for investing for medical tourism. People know by name. Agra, of course, for Taj Mahal, but that's an exception. Surprisingly, Ahmedabad comes out quite good. So does Delhi by definition. Jaipur is very good from sort of a tourist attraction. Can we make medical tourism hub there, for example? In other words, heritage attractions and medical tourism must coincide geographically, physically, as much as possible. And the last one is, can we offer concierge service? One-stop shop. I have gone through myself at Mayo Clinic for executive health. And absolutely, it's incredible, flawless uh, hand handholding. All the information gathered before I show up, it is already in the database. I had a one non-medical contact person I stayed on the facility, which they have a great, great hotel, for example. And from morning till evening, there was a constant communication. I did the blood test at about 7, 8 in the morning. By 9.30, all the results were ready. It's real time, IT driven, with a huge personal touch experience. And I must have touched at least about seven to eight different specialties. One has to experience Mayo Clinic experience especially for executive health, to figure out what is the real benchmark. In other words, I think India has all of the capabilities. India has all the ingredients, but is in search of a recipe. One of the key recipes is to transform this industry as we are trying to transform the hospitality industry, the tourism industry itself, from highly unorganized to an organized marketplace. As retailing is getting transformed by e-commerce people reaching second, third tier cities, 
I think it can be done with the use of technology and making it organized. India has the size but not the scale and that is very key. So let me conclude my presentation. India is destined to become one of the three top medical destinations for, I mean, destinations for medical tourism. Similar to cut diamonds, I like to always talk about that because we have done a fantastic job in that industry, but for us more appropriately is IT services, and now of course we are finding accounting services, legal services, medical services is the next one that can be done. India has several competitive advantages, including accredited medical facilities and services, highly qualified doctors and surgeons, including support staff, and strong Indian diaspora all over the world. India, however, needs to promote and market itself in advanced countries, including United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and several European individual nations, not EU together, but individual countries. India is a very affordable and accessible alternative to the domestic healthcare, which cannot sustain the demand and they cannot invest in more facilities. So outsourcing is inevitable. How can India leverage just like we did in the IT services? What India needs is to embrace global certifications, similar to IT services, as well as compete to win global awards. That increases the brand value of India, not necessarily any one hospital group. I think that's very important. How do we raise the brand value of the nation as a whole for medical tourism? Thailand does a good job. Mexico does a good job, etc. In addition to marketing to patients, as I mentioned, it needs to target the providers as well as the payers in advanced countries by leveraging the Indian medical diaspora. India needs to use digital technology, including mobile phones, to provide friction-free, end-to-end service similar to Uber. In ride-sharing, Uber has made a huge impact. It's so frictionless that Uber becomes addictive almost. How can we do a similar one in health care and in medical tourism? It also needs to link better both with the hospitality industry, hotel motel, as well as heritage uh, facilities or attractions to make both the patient as well as the family who accomplish the patient. So in other words, it's an approach to not just the patient, but the whole entourage that comes to support the patient quite often. My final thought. India's medical tourism has the size, but no scale. It is critical to transform the industry from the unorganized to the organized market in order to increase the scale as we have done in the airline industry. Think about airline industry. Monopoly, Indian Airlines was the only choice, let's say as late as probably 80s. And then now you see how big it is growing, how large it is, and absolutely wonderful airline service. Many private sector airlines are doing wonderfully well. And of course, it is now heavily competed by international carriers landing more in and out of India. So overall, I want to leave a message that India is destined to become one of the top three global medical tourist destinations. Thank you very much.